G'day guys and gal, the Emperor is a very sexy man, at least he was before the whole skeletal lithium battery hybrid situation he now has going on. And despite being godlike in many ways, the Emperor was a man who had needs. With the Emperor being born thousands of years before the invention of the condom, he was dropping his seed left, right and center, which I really cannot blame the man. If I was that sexy and had thousands of years to wander the earth, I'd probably do some damage as well. This resulted in quite a high number of women falling pregnant and giving birth to his children individuals with demigod-like power as they were literally biological children of the Emperor. These beings were called the Sensei, and despite the fact that their status in the lore is canon or not is currently not super clear, that lore itself is very interesting to learn about. Just quickly first, I'm actually getting the studio upgraded today, new lights, microphone and whatnot, so take a good look at this shit ass setup and lighting because on Wednesday it should be a lot better, hopefully. In my opinion, stagnation is regression, which is why I'm always trying to improve, even if the improvement is just making things look prettier to hide how shit my content actually is. Today, we'll go over the lore of the Sensei, detailing their power, notable Senseis, where they are now, and if they are actually still canon or not. Now let's get into it. The lore of the senseis is very contradictory, convoluted, and might not even be canon anymore, so buckle up buckaroo and get ready for some random as fuck lore. The sensei were either descendants of the emperor, who after a certain amount of generations, the sensei gene would activate and then that descendant would be born with incredible power and immortality, or other versions of the sensei had them as the direct children of the emperor, some of whom would almost be as old as he was. As a direct result of sharing the emperor's DNA was that the senseis didn't age, they'd also heal very quickly from non-fatal wounds, and and their literal cells were anti-chaos to the core, making them completely incorruptible. They were very wise and even tempered, with their emotions being easily controlled as they saw the galaxy from a state of harmony and focus. As such, their psychic abilities could be used and abused without any risk of attracting demons or overloading themselves. This also explains why the Emperor seems to be able to tap into the infinite well of the warp power himself without any issues with corruption. He is so far beyond the emotional risks of normal psychers that demons have nothing to grab onto when he turbo lightning fucks some bitches to death. Death. However, this isn't the only rendition of the Sensei's law. Other law states that they can only be the sons of the Emperor and that they are not psychers, but are actually blanks and are invisible to the Emperor, which is why he never tried to find them and recruit them. But this law was only in one book that came out in fucking 1988, so let's just ignore that. To add another layer of spice and confusion, the Sensei were directly linked with the Star Child as well as the Illuminati, two other parts of 40k law whose position in canon is now in doubt. With the Star Child, the compassionate shard of the Emperor within the warp, being their patron deity and looking after them while the throne emperor is busy holding the galaxy together while getting his crusty balls tasered. But I feel like I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's start at the beginning of the sensei's life to give some context. Much like the Emperor's own childhood, they didn't fly out of the womb shooting lasers out of their eyes. They aged until their prime and then begun to notice that they were different to everyone else. They were stronger, faster, healthier, and way more autistic. As they were forced to leave their mortal lives behind due to their lack of aging, as well as all the superstition back in the day, they would wander the earth much in the same way as their father did, learning what they could while trying to avoid gathering attention. A number of sensei were burnt at the stake or drowned for being witches, while others went off to form or join secret societies, like the Illuminati. It seems as if none of them were ever found by or joined the Emperor. Many Sensei survived into the setting of 30 and 40k and have chosen to become wandering heroes, using their abilities and powers to help the innocent, protecting them from chaos or the very imperial tyranny that their father created. They kind of act like inquisitors in a way, traveling around the galaxy with their retinue of diverse and interesting companions. These band of adventurers often include Eldar, who see the Sensei as one of the few types of human that is worth their help and attention. It really feels like if you were to join the 40k universe or roleplay within it, the Sensei would be who you would choose to be, as they were extremely adventurous and powerful, but not bound like the Inquisition or too overpowered. As a bit of a sad irony, the Inquisition sees the Sensei as these immortal mutants who are complex servants of chaos. Hence, they hunt the Sensei with extreme prejudice, and are the reason why the Sensei have been almost totally driven into extinction, which is pretty fucking retarded, but this is the Inquisition we are speaking of. There are even times where the Inquisitors uncover that the Sensei are probably the Emperor's children or descendants, but then go, nah, that means we would have to to face up to the possibility and take responsibility that we have been genociding our own god's kids, which we don't want to do. As for the sensei themselves, they can go through various upgrades or side grades. If they stay true to themselves, protect the innocent, and fight against chaos, they will gain the attention of the star child, the compassionate shard of the emperor that he removed from himself in order to face up against Horus. This shard of light, power, and kindness will mark these sensei with a specific power rune, kind of like the opposite to the mark of chaos. This mark could make them better at killing demons, better protectors, have 
have better endurance, and so on. There is even a type of sensei that upon defeating an enemy foe, can choose to use their mark to spare them, flooding the defeated foe with awe and light at such an act, often resulting in them re renouncing their previous allegiance. So if this Redeemer Sensei defeated a Chaos Lord of Nurgle and then spared him, that Chaos Lord could then renounce Nurgle, be completely cleansed of corruption, and then become an agent of the Star Child, dedicated to the destruction of Nurgle. I'm sure you can start to see why the Sensei have been quietly pushed out of the setting. If a Sensei has become extremely righteous and follows the path of the Star Child, eventually they will reach Apotheosis. The Star Child will teleport them into their domain within the warp and speak with them. If they are not actually ready, the Star Child will give them a small power boost, tell them of their nature and connection to the Emperor, and then send them back. However, if they are ready, they will ascend, gaining even more power, wisdom, and their physical form will change. They are then returned to real space as a Sensei Master, the greatest form of a Sensei that wields a shitload of power. Other Sensei have been lured in to join the Illuminati as part of a special plot to save the Emperor. Basically, the Illuminati are tricking these Sensei into becoming Sensei Knights, who safeguard the Imperium against chaos from the shadows. This is just to keep the Sensei busy though. The real intention is to gather as many Sensei as possible and then sacrifice them to the Emperor to restore the Emperor back to flesh and blood, so that he may lead mankind once again. The Illuminati are also aware that the Emperor probably doesn't want this to occur, hence they keep it a secret from him. The final type of Sensei are the worst. Those who, despite their biological resistance to chaos, have chosen to join the Ruinous Powers anyway, creating powerful and extremely evil Grey Sensei. They stand above other servants of chaos in terms of naughtiness, as they are completely willing to serve chaos without any form of mind corruption or manipulation, as they are incorruptible. Maybe these are the Sensei who lost their allies and friends to inquisitorial attacks, or maybe they have just become jaded from thousands of years of wandering in a shithole galaxy. Either way, a Grey Sensei would make for a great antagonist, finally giving us a villain who wasn't just this insane chaos simp but actually had great motivations unclouded by Slaanesh jizzing in his ear. There aren't many named or known sensei, however there is the Wandering Inquisitor, who was a sensei that wandered the galaxy, helping Imperial citizens much like an Inquisitor would. He was nearly killed by the Inquisition, however was saved by the Illuminati. There is also the Lucifer Princep, who declared himself a son of the Emperor and led a world in revolt against the Imperium. The Inquisition tried to take him out, but they didn't and that story just kind of ended. After all, the book that was featured in came out in 1995, before I was fucking born. Seriously though, read the synopsis of this book. Law back then was wild. So with all this happening, where are the Sensei now? Well, they have been mentioned as being alive and active in the 41st millennium. However, the setting has been about the 41st millennium for 20 years now, so that doesn't really mean much. It does seem a bit like GW has been moving away from the Illuminati, the Sensei, and even the Star Child for a while now, instead putting in new lore via the Horus Heresy, stuff like the Dark King, for example. However, as GW doesn't just like retconning things out of existence because it is obnoxious and shitty, they introduce their everything is canon, but not everything is true policy, which is a bit of a cop out, but I can understand why they did it. Basically, what that means is that the Sensei were a thing, but now they aren't. How this happened was that firstly, the Illuminati were destroyed a few years before the current setting as a side note, most likely the Inquisition catching wind of them and destroying them. As for the Sensei, a large amount of them were killed on Levin Lenore 4 by the Salamander Space Marine chapter from Orders of the Inquisition, as they were believed to be a Titsnitchian cult. However, not all Sensei were present there, with a few surviving in case GW wanted to use them again in the future. But the main thing is that the Illuminati Sensei are dead or scattered, the Star Child Sensei are mostly dead, and the Grey Sensei haven't been mentioned in decades and are probably dead. Interestingly enough though, the Star Child seems to still be very much canon, and is currently being brought back into the setting by the Indominus Crusade, with the Psychic Awakening flooding the galaxy with warp energy and empowering the Emperor. Many Imperials are getting visions of a godlike child awakening, whilst the final Horus Heresy book will finally reveal what the Emperor had to do to defeat Horus, as well as answer the question about if the old lore about the creation of the Star Child is still correct or not. Personally, I don't mind the Sensei being in the lore, they just need to be revamped and done right. Keep them at a set number, maybe like seven sensei ever exist, with each one being an interesting and morally complex character. But also in saying that they don't really need to exist. We already have inquisitors and rogue traders for those spicy unconventional stories, we already have perpetuals for immortal powerful beings that are connected to the emperor, and we already have primarchs for the emperor's sons. So while I appreciate the old hectic lore of the sensei, the illuminati and the star child, I don't think the setting is missing much by the sensei no longer being around. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be, where we have a live action nude Warhammer cosplays, original 40k fan art, and a boatload of Battle Mace 40 million hentai. Hit the subscribe button and hit the real subscribe button for more sensual content. Join the Discord for more memes, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.